said, I'm a CTO of Lucina Research. Lucina Research is a software company and we deliver decision support to portfolio managers and wealth managers. And I want to tell you today a little bit about our processes. In fact, I want to teach you a little bit, if you don't mind, about uh, how machine learning works. And then I'm going to show you how we have integrated uh, Ravenpack's signals uh, into our flow, uh, validated that there, uh, there is alpha there, and show you how we, we created a couple strategies uh, using that data. Uh, me, um, I'm a professor at Georgia Tech. I teach courses in AI and finance there. Um, <clears throat> I've, uh, I, I became really excited about finance. My, my training is not in finance. Became really excited about it a few years ago, and I took a sabbatical, embedded myself at a hedge fund, and I was a quant developer for a year there. Um, and came out of that and began building up my expertise. Uh, eventually had a critical mass to create a startup, and that's what uh, Lucina is. Um, just to tell you a little bit about our company, um, uh, our, our flagship product is this uh, uh, is called QuantDesk. It's a cloud-based product. I'll show you that a little bit later. I'm not trying to sell it to you, but just to give you context of what we're doing. Uh, we also deliver strategies directly. So if people are interested, uh, they don't want to go through um, our cloud-based product. They just want strategies delivered. We can do that as well. Um, and finally, um, we're available. We've got a shop full of uh, great quants, and we can do um, custom work. OK, um, I'm going to start with an introduction to supervised machine learning. Uh, then I'm going to tell you how we have applied that to Ravenpack data and created two strategies. And I'll show you the results that we've got with those two strategies. Now, um, many of you I know are in the business of building models. Uh, you may not use a machine learning approach to build those models, uh, but the, the, the gist is the same. You have some observation of the world. Let's call that x. These might be factors of a stock. Uh, they might be macro um, indicators. Uh, and you want to make some sort of prediction. Uh, that might be future price of a stock. Might be volatility. Could be any number of things. The, the, the key here is we'll call the observations x and the predictions y. Now, if you build your model uh, using historical examples, uh, for instance, we roll back time, we can observe what the factors were for a stock on a certain date and what its return was later, and you use those examples to train your model, we call that supervised learning. All that means is you have an input, you know the output, you give those examples to the learner um, through this historical data, and boom, it's got a model. Now let me give you a um, real simple example of what this, uh, <clears throat> what this means or, or you know, how we can do that. And this is, this is made up data, but uh, we're, essentially we're going to look at barometric pressure and observe uh, how much it rains depending on the barometric pressure. And we want to build a model from that data that tells us gee, um, I see this barometric pressure today, uh, how much rain can I expect? So each little dot here represents one day of observation. So for instance, on this day, barometric pressure went up uh, one unit and we had no rain. On this day, it went down and it rained a lot. Um, <clears throat> now, how can we model that? There's a number of different ways we might model it. Uh, this is probably one that you're very familiar with. Let's fit a line, that's linear regression. Uh, uh, so this model says if barometric pressure drops one point, we expect about that much rain. Works pretty good, but notice it doesn't capture this part of the data very well, doesn't capture that part very well. So we can make things a little bit more complex. We can have a more complicated uh, parametric model. Uh, here we're modeling it now with, um, <clears throat> uh, with x squared x and b polynomial. Fits it a little bit better. But still, there's corners it misses. Now what we do, um, our approach that we use uh, primarily at Lucina is we call it uh, data-driven. So we don't throw all that data away. We always keep it. And when we want to make a prediction, we go to the region nearby where we're making our query. We look at the neighbors, and we take their mean, and that's our forecast. And if we do that at every point along here, 
we get a very uh, detailed model that fits uh, all those, all those uh, uh, corners of the data. So that's, uh, that's a data-driven model, and that's, uh, that's what we use primarily at Lucina. Okay, now we can do the same thing with stocks, right? Um, and uh, to build a model with, uh, for instance, um, let me take a little bit of water here. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Raven packs data, we need to identify first what factors we're going to use. Those are our X, of course, and what we're trying to predict. Now, uh, Peter Hafez at uh, Raven Pack had earlier created a model <clears throat> using uh, five day momentum, and he wanted to uh, evaluate gee, if we've got strong move in momentum, what can sentiment indicators tell us about the likelihood of a reversal? Uh, what he found in his work was that if we saw a strong, let's say, uh, negative movement in momentum that was not supported by the sentiment, in other words, there wasn't sentiment, um, you know, essentially bad sentiment, that the, the, a reversal was likely. Uh, similarly with uh, positive, uh, positive momentum. Uh, so we, um, we wanted to validate that approach, but instead of using his approach to building a model, we're going to use our machine learning approach. So we use uh, these three factors, uh, Ravenpack's um, sentiment volume, Ravenpack's uh, sentiment strength, and then this five-day trading momentum. And we were looking to predict five-day market relative returns. So we implemented this in a back test as follows. We rolled back time, sampled the, uh, these factors back in time, and we looked even further back to build our model. So on a particular date, we look back, build our model from that data, make a forecast. Uh, this is on S&P 500 stocks. Um, and we buy the top 50, hold them for a week, and uh, repeat. So here's what that back test looks like. Um, this is a 10-year back test. Uh, the orange line is the strategy I just described. Uh, the blue line is a benchmark that we created uh, using the, the same way of building a model, but it had only one factor, namely uh, momentum. So you can see that when we add these sentiment indicators, we get uh, increased return over this period, a uh, total of about 134% over the 10 years. Uh, now if instead of buying the top 50 stocks, we buy the bottom, we see uh, significantly uh, reduced performance uh, this supports the hypothesis that uh, the sentiment indicators add value. Okay, let me um, move now to uh, the, the next model. And this is where I think uh, the algorithms we use at Lucena really shine. And, uh, you know, we, we have hundreds of indicators. We have uh, uh, proprietary data feeds uh, from Ravenpack, from others. And one thing we're able to do is build models from multiple different sources of data. And we've got uh, algorithms that, uh, you know, given, say, two factors, we'll look for additional factors that add significant uh, value. So we took um, these two Ravenpack uh, Raven uh, indicators, same ones as in the last model, but we asked the system, hey, uh, what other indicators that if we add them to the model will enhance value. Um, and that, uh, that search yielded PE ratio and SMA crossing. We also wanted to see if we could look a little bit further into the future. So the model I just showed you was five days only. What if we looked at a 20 day return instead? So we made all those changes um, and we built, uh, we built a strategy that works uh, the following way. Uh, each day, we um, look at all these factors. We build a model going back three months. Uh, we make a forecast for all of the members of the S&P 500. And we pick the single top one and add that to our portfolio. Uh, we, we allocate 5% to it, repeat that for 20 days. Eventually, we're fully invested now 100% with um, at each day the best stock on that day. The next day we drop the oldest one and add the new best one. So we're always fully invested with 20 stocks and they're always 
the ones that, that were the best on that date. So here is um, that back test over the same time period. So as you can see, uh, orange here uh, is a strategy. Um, the benchmark here is S&P 500. Um, but you can see uh, significantly improved over the, over the um, earlier approach. So um, I've shown you now how, you know, in general, uh, we use machine learning to, to build models, uh, how we've uh, integrated uh, Ravenpack's uh, sentiment data. Um, these are back tests created using our system. I want to show you a little bit uh, about what our uh, cloud-based platform looks like and how that integration works. And, and one thing I want to emphasize is um, we enable our clients to build their own models. So you might hypothesize that, uh, gee, this sentiment indicator plus this fundamental um, might, uh, might provide a good model. You can build your own model by including those factors that you think matter. Uh, so we're not just selling a black box. We're enabling uh, people to build their own models. Um, here's what, um, this is what our platform looks like. You, you select the um, uh, portfolio you want to work with, or say the white list of stocks you want to work with over here on the left. And then you can select the individual uh, equities here. Uh, down below, uh, you can view the historical value of that equity. And overlaid here in green, I, I realize it's a little bit hard to see, uh, you can see the specific indicator. Any of the indicators you want to look at, you can look uh, at them overlaid over the, um, over the stock history there. Uh, we have a forecaster, a stock price forecaster. It's essentially the one that I described. Um, here we've got our Raven Pack model that we built. Uh, so you might select, say, S&P 100 for the set of stocks you want to look at. Select the Raven Pack model. Uh, you can ask it to forecast out to one month, but as uh, short as uh, one day, uh, and tell it how much data you want it to use. And then uh, ask it to make the forecast and select which stock you want to look at here. Uh, it'll show you the historical price. And then this is the uh, forecast. So the, the line there in the middle is the forecast return. And the upper and lower bars there are um, uh, standard deviations. Um, <clears throat> one thing to mention here is we score all of our forecasts according to confidence that we have. So you can look for combinations. So the five stars are the most confident. You can look for combinations of um, high confidence and, say, significant price change. And those might be the basis for um, uh, a, a strategy. This is, um, I know it's, you can't see it uh, in detail, but I just want to show you the sorts of tools we have to build models. So this is our tool for adding factors to a model. We list all the factors here you might choose from here. When you click Add, it's uh, provided here. And you get a histogram of what the values of the, um, for that particular factor are. And you can set sliders. Um, over which ones you want to you want to focus on. Um, this is uh, uh, one of the sorts of analyses we provide. So you can you can provide factors you want to look at and thresholds over which you would uh, say consider a stock to be uh, successful. And this will show you, uh, on average, um, returns uh, for stocks that meet those criteria. Uh, this is the tool that we used to build up that multi-factor model. What it does over here is it provides a sorted list of additional factors from our um, library of 350 factors of if you add that factor, uh, how much value will it add to the strategy? So we added just two factors there. That's how we got our four-factor model. Um, that um, is it for my presentation, I think maybe uh, I helped catch uh, uh, catch up a little bit. Um, anyways, uh, I'd be pleased to answer any questions. Thanks. I'll come close. David Camion from Spark Beyond. Uh, it seems like uh, you give people the freedom to add factors to their models as they see fit. So is it entirely a manual process, or is there any automation of 
feature selection? Um, yeah, good question. I, I maybe went through it too quickly. Um, this, uh, this panel on our platform, uh, A, shows you on the left. So, so unfortunately, this is not a very sexy example. Um, <laughs> what this shows is uh, whenever a stock matches criteria, say, on that date, this line represents its price coming into that date and price going out. Uh, we more often, uh, we're looking for sort of a, a slope up, of course. Uh, but you can, um, uh, so this is based on the factors that are involved right now. Uh, it then recommends additional factors over here that you can add. So the way we built the model that I showed you earlier is we started with the two Raven Pack factors. Uh, we ran this analysis and then allowed it to recommend additional factors over here and we added uh, PE ratio and uh, SMA crossing. Um, now, uh, we can also, uh, uh, we also have other strategies where we, um, we use genetic algorithms to search for all, all combinations of factors across all the, all the ones that we have. But what I just described is a method if, if you want, you know, you feel it's important to have this factor, what other factors could you add to it to improve performance? Great. Yes. So the question is, uh, the the other three factors, the sentiment uh, uh, strength, sentiment volume, and uh, PE ratio are sort of continuous, and SMA crossing is a binary. Either it just happened or it didn't. Um, what we do is we. Um, we turn SMA crossing into more of a continuous uh, variable by counting days since SMA crossing. So as soon as it crosses, we start counting and it, it goes up until there's another SMA crossing. Excellent. Thank you very much, Tucker. Thank you.